would come back now to, to this nothingness. You have the book, A Universe from Nothing. Could you walk us through what nothing really means in your context? It's a subtle issue because our definition of nothing has changed. Yeah. We now realize that the difference between nothing and something is not very great because the simplest kind of nothing is empty space with nothing there, right? That's something we can all kind of picture, even though most of us think of the the room around us, the air is empty space, but it's not, of course. It's, there are literally gazillions of molecules that are banging around in every cubic centimeter of air. But take away that air and, you know, and go have the vacuum of space, which isn't empty either. There's about one proton per cubic centimeter in our galaxy, so it's not completely empty, but it's pretty empty. Take that emptiness and say, well, that's nothing. And that, by the way, I think is kind of as close to the nothing of the Bible as you can get, like this vast, eternal, dark void. Well, it's not empty because we now know, due to the laws of quantum mechanics and special relativity, that there are, in that nothingness, there are virtual particles popping in and out of existence on a time scale so fast that you can't measure them, so you don't see that they're there. But they're, but they're coming in and out of existence. So, so that empty space is not really empty. Now you might say, okay, but that, there are no real particles there. There's nothing you can see. But we know under certain conditions, virtual particles can turn into real particles. And therefore, under certain conditions, if you wait long enough in a universe that has nothing in it, eventually the laws of quantum mechanics will populate it at some level. And so you could say that nothing is unstable in a way, and it will inevitably produce something.